Hi, everybody. Uh, I would like to invite you to walk with me for 18 minutes through 20 years, 30 years of my career. I would try to do as quick as possible, but it's quite large. I would love to start with the Crown Fountain. Probably everybody knows it's a piece that I unveiled in 2004 in Chicago at the Millennium Park. It was probably one of the dreams that everybody has to, to pass a dream into reality with all the, the possibilities and all the, the, the people helping to, 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 to get in the bad direction. You probably remember that piece. It was like the conversation of two faces spooding water from their mouth. This very old tradition from my culture that give you life through the mouth. Uh, well, in former cultures, that was one of the symbols of life. I don't know why, uh, even if I was born in the Mediterranean area, I, I didn't float. I don't swim. And it was a big problem for my mother that she was upset to teach me the way to float, and it was impossible. That is probably the reason I love so much water. Because one day, with my friends in Jerusalem, they took me down to the Dead Sea, and finally I was floating. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the reason is because many times a creator, uh, an artist, probably everyone, didn't find the right sea where they could swim properly. And the Crown Fountain was a little bit, in some ways, an homage to my childhood, my history, my family, everybody, but also a beautiful homage to the, the, the Chicagoans, the people who really, in an anonymous way, are building up a city. Many times we talk about cities just about architecture, architecture, buildings, buildings. But the city is really the sense of one community. Is the, when we say uh, Chicago and what it means, because to, uh, every second somebody is dying, somebody is born. And, and that piece was an homage to people. I, I really love people and to put in touch them in, in a very nice way. Uh, I remember when, when we unveiled the... Ah, what's happened here? Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> Sorry. The night before the opening of the piece, uh, we were trying to imagine what we can do with that piece because the municipality was really concerned about the piece. It was too intellectual, too many high technology. We, we spent four years filming faces, 1,000 faces of people living in town. And I decided to take the fans out and to see what's happened the night before. And I don't know from where, a lot of kids and kids and kids were arriving to enjoy the piece. It was really extraordinary. I guess the kids were really the, the, the link in between my job and, and, and the community. They really saved my project in Chicago. And uh, every time I'm there, uh, you, 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 you could notice that the, 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 the reflecting pool becomes a kind of a stage. It's a line, you can take the decision to just walk in or to stay out. And uh, it's a fantastic explosion of freedom. I guess that piece was not only a beautiful object in the space, but it was creating public space in itself. It, I guess it was the tradition of the Mediterranean plazas, let's say. Nothing in between, nothing uh, fill up with other spaces, just empty, waiting for people arriving and chat and talk and enjoy. I guess this piece became, in a certain way, an icon of the city because 1,000 faces also is a way to pay homage to that people, but also to date the piece. Uh, those faces, when you are in front, you see young guys or old people. You can imagine it's your grandfather or your son, whatever. That, that kind of uh, mythological return to the idea of anonymous but instead to talk about godness, to talk about ourselves, I guess it was also something that returned the idea of to feel proud about one community. Uh, I remember with the help of the School of the Art Institute, we were filming and filming all, all, all those people, all those faces, and, uh, and we enjoyed so much to try to convince them to click the eyes and to put the lips in this special position to blow a candle. And, uh, and, and, and many people were not able to do that position. And, and it was very funny because when you see the faces on the screen, it seems that 
th th those people were made for, and uh, and becomes really like in the old tradition of a sculpture, a sculpture buildings all together as one. Uh, the idea to return, uh, well, let's say this classic idea of plaza into the public space was really beautiful in Chicago. Obviously, that piece was born from other precedent pieces that they've been working 20 years before, 21 years ago, this idea of bridges of light. Uh, I mean, architects are permanently doing horizontal bridges that don't connect really important things. And, and, and at that time, 20 years ago, I've been trying to, to create vertical bridges, bridges that really could connect the important things, heaven and hell, earth and sky. This beautiful, for example, that piece that I did in Jerusalem, which announced the end of the Shabbat every Saturday, or the, the last one that I did in, <clears throat> in London, in the roof of the BBC Broadcasting House in Lagan Place, which is announcing every night the news at 9.30. This idea to celebrate whatever is important, to celebrate life. And in that case, those people uh, in, in, in the broadcasting house know so well words that I've been creating an homage to silence. For example, in Dallas, you have at the National Sculpture Center those sitting figures on top of poles, which is another of the families in my work. This kind of people sitting, waiting, and watching, or in conversations like in Nice in the south of France, or just fix it on the walls. Uh, I always thought that uh, we are like fat angels that we could not fly. But even with our default, <laughs> we have the possibility to illuminate life. And uh, uh, the human body, this, this fantastic container of dreams, uh, uh, thanks to the Crown Fountain, uh, I follow uh, quite deeper the idea of portrait. Uh, in, in pieces like this one, which is in front of the Meadows Museum, uh, when you can see through, and you can see how a hat it looks from inside, it's like a ghost. <coughs> we know the, 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 the surface, the outdoor surface, every day in front of, of the mirror, you see your face reflecting, but how it looks from inside. Thanks to the new technology, 3D, lines, uh, the virtual lines. I, I, I had the capacity to create those pieces. That one, for example, is at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park in the north of England. <clears throat> and you can see something fantastic that is the landscape comes inside and gets part of our body. Those two heads in, up in the north of Sweden, in a, this kind of silent dialogue of light. In New York, with three, or, or this group of 11 alabaster heads that uh, it was the continuation of my work at the Crown Fountain, but with a very traditional material to carve again in alabaster, in marble, those kind of elongate heads of very young girls in Salzburg. Or, or that piece that I did in, in, in near Liverpool, in St. Helens. It was a very little town, uh, a mining town. And when Margaret Thatcher canceled all the carbon system in England, they, they, they get completely without jobs in a very uh, important depression. 20 years later, they like to transform the, the old mine into a public park, and they ask my help. And I like to install the head of a young girl, but looking inside in a dream state position. That girl, which is in the top of a beautiful hill, even like that, she is looking inside. I remember one of the ex miners when I was working on the project told me, Jaume, you cannot imagine how dark is inside the, the, the pit. It's so dark that even light becomes a dream. And that was the reason that I, I put that title in the dream. But thinking about the, the, the darkness, I remember when I was a child, I hidden myself inside the upright piano of my father. When I had problems at home, it was two slicing doors in the piano. I, had, I hidden myself inside. And I never forgot when my father was playing the piano and I was inside the vibration of this instrument. Uh, William Blake said something extraordinary. He said, one thought feels immensity. And, and that poem, I guess it represents pretty well my intention about vibration of the body, vibration of the objects, this kind of expansion of our ideas that could fill up the space, not with 
physical objects but with energy. And all this work that I'm doing since years are this invitation to the people to just beat the gongs and to feel the vibration of the material. Uh, it's very funny because when they do that, they start to smile, as probably the people when they decide to walk inside the swimming pool in Chicago. I am I'm also working a lot with symbols. That is probably the last project that I did with them in, in the main entrance of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Uh, I represent all the countries in the world with 196 symbols and drops of water are falling down from the, the ceiling, producing their own music. Every symbol is made by hand. That means that each one has a different music. Every country has his own voice. And, uh, and, and all this kind of rain of water, it's also a rain of words. I'm, I'm using a lot of poetry. My main poets, my preferred poets, each one probably has them, themselves, an idea of what is the best poem or the best poet. But we are talking about poetry, and poetry is something that protects and our life is from the flies that you probably remember, the curtains that we had in the stores a long time ago that was made with elements of metal that when you open and pass through, it produced this beautiful sound. Ling, 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 ling. That, that is poetry. And, uh, and that poetry that make up our body as well, I guess life is permanently tattooing our body with transparent ink. And uh, it produced a kind of uh, hidden message in our body that somebody could read and some not. But finally, our body, it's, uh, let's say, a text architecture. It's a kind of uh, a place where you invite the others to come in. It's uh, the, the maximum idea of love, when somebody disappears inside you. And it's in those pieces, when I'm doing the, this is kind of extra skin, new skin made out with, with text, which is made only with letters, like a cell in biology. Every letter seems nothing, but in association with others, you can do text, words, culture. And, but also people. It's the mix of different alphabets. Uh, um, in that piece that you, you, you have in front of you, it's a mix of eight alphabets, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Russian, Greek. That piece in Miami, it's the, I call those pieces nomad because they are traveling around the world in, a, in, in, in different places or in Chatsworth in England. Uh, they, 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 they are inviting people to come in. That it's a piece that I installed recently at the MIT in Boston. Uh, or, or, or I could find new supporters of my work, <laughs> as, as I found in England right now, uh, in Singapore or in Moscow. Uh, when you are inside and you are looking through, it seems that the world is different. I guess it's a very romantic attitude, but I'm insisting a lot about that, that art has the tremendous capacity to change the world. And, and I guess in that piece that I did last year in uh, Okijima, a little island in the south of Japan, which I did a, a very little pavilion to welcome people visiting the island. It's a very beautiful island uh, that for several months are completely covered by flowers. And there's a lot of visitors coming, arriving by boat. And, and, and that uh, little pavilion, it's the welcome area for them. I did a roof with the mix of alphabets as well. But I, I, I installed the, the house, this little place, this little pavilion, on the water again, like in the Crown Fountain, to create the sense of home, like an oyster. The roof is physical real. But the reflection on the water is creating the second part. And uh, you can see myself walking inside this beautiful oyster. Uh, just to finish, that, that is the project that I did this summer in New York at the Madison Square Park. Uh, the title of that project is Echo. You probably remember that in the Greek mythology, Echo was a, a beautiful nymph that fall in love with Narcissus. Zeus was angry immediately about that, and, and he condemned her 
to repeat permanently the words of others, but not to say nothing from herself. I, I always thought that today we have that problem. There's so many messages around, especially in creation, that we, we are not any more sure if our words are from ourselves or it's just the echo of something else. I guess New York was a, a perfect place to, to talk about it. I also introduced in that piece the sense of beauty, let's say like an alien, something that arrived from another planet, uh, uh, the, the idea of beauty without any explanation, uh, something that we can say, wow, it's just beautiful. And, uh, and I remember the reactions of people walking through the, 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 the square. It's a very busy place in New York. And, uh, and it was always a kind of surprise. Uh, but uh, visually, I was insisting in something that years ago in the Moines, I did a lecture, and uh, I was insisting, as always, about how, how important is for me the interaction of my work with people. And somebody in the audience asked me, well, Mr. Plenza, you, you are talking all the time about interact with your work, but in front of the piece that you have in the museum, it is a display which says, do not touch. How you can explain that? And I said, well, the museum just missed the second part of the quote, because it's do not touch, please, caress. <laughs> and, and I guess that it's key in my work. And it's one of the elements that I'm insisting to produce silence in a very noisy time like today, to produce the ten tenderness that uh, people has the eyes in their fingers. I guess art should be experienced, not only with your eyes, but with your heart, with your arms, with your fingers. And, uh, and every one of my projects pretend like in this head to create a certain quietness, a place where you can listen again your own words and your own heart. Thank you very much. <laughs>